So it describes a, a block of mass sliding without friction. So um, that probably means energy is conserved. So sliding, it's going to doing this loop the loop thing and then sliding up. I think there's some demo videos that you've seen, um, right? <laughs> so, um, all right, I, let's just go in order. And this is, um, um, it's an algebraic response question. So you have to keep your all algebra in terms of symbols and answer in terms of these symbols. Um, I don't know if you've had questions like that so far, but um, the system we are using has capability to handle that. So um, that also means I think uh, what you see isn't exactly randomized, but I'm okay with that. You should be developing your algebra skill and that matters more. Okay, so if the block starts at, from rest at A, uh, what is its speed at B? So as you are reading it and thinking about it, I want you to think about what quantity is conserved. So now that we cover the chapters eight and nine, our first go to tool will always be conservation, some kind of conservation law. It's mainly because conservation law is so much easier than standard strategy. So whenever a problem is solvable using conservation law, you want to use conservation law. So the first thing you should think about is what quantity is conserved. And I commented on this earlier without friction. And that's kind of a hint or prompt to, for you to think about is energy conserved. And this question is always worth a moment or two to think about carefully, because sometimes there are situations where energy is in conserved. Now, once you have convinced yourself that energy is conserved, then use conservation of energy. So for part A, that's where I'm going to start at, conservation of energy. So what then means is, the conserved quantity at point A, so that is total energy at point A, must be equal to total energy, the conserved quantity at point B, because that's what it means for energy to be conserved. So um, whenever you talk about energy, there's the potential energy and kinetic energy and, uh, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> Those two points, moment snapshots. Um, some things are easy here. I think it, um, ah, it doesn't say it starts from, does it uh, start from rest? <laughs> if it didn't say that, I would be assuming it. Uh, because it starts from rest, I can say kinetic energy at point A is equal to zero. And it is asking for its speed at B, and that's going to relate to kinetic energy at point B, one half VB squared. All right, so I need to write down the potential energy terms. Oh, I better define what a zero is, or zero height or reference height is. So it looks like this level grind is already being used as reference height. Then what you should realize thinking through geometry is this the height here is r because it's part of a circle of radius r. So, all right, I think I have enough information to write this down. So potential energy at point A, that's just the mgh, the gravitational potential energy, or in terms of the quantities given, it's mg times 4r, that's equal to potential energy at point B, mg times 3, not 3r, just r, um, that's the height where it's at, mg times r plus um, the kinetic energy, one half mvb squared. So the question, the remaining task is to solve for vb. And it looks like it, uh, some things cancel out that makes things easier, always makes me happy. Um, I have to move in gr over and when I do that, that's going to cancel one of the four R's. So this will become three R and this will be gone. And the only thing I need to deal with is this uh, 
fraction one half. So I need to multiply both sides by two. When I've done that, this is what I get. Vb squared, that's the right hand side, is equal to two times uh, what's, what was on the left hand side. So that's uh, uh, th two times three, six, gr. Oh, to get rid of the square root, I take, or to get rid of the square, I take the square root of both sides. So that's it. Um, now, I think if you put your cursor here in the actual homework set, there's a whole palette of tools to use. Um, you, you can use that to express that, or if you want to learn kind of the common notation, uh, if you're typing this out, this will be SQRT 6GR. And if you want, you can put asterisks between symbols to indicate that it's a multiplication. But the my open method system um, knows when uh, it doesn't need that asterisk to know what's multiplication and what's not. So that's it, uh, simple enough. We'll probably use this, need this answer later for something else. So let me just uh, highlight this. Um, in part B, it asks, asks, what is the force of the track on the block at B? So as you look at this, I hope you are thinking, why does there need to be a force? Isn't it moving straight down? Like, does a force need to be pushing? And the answer is yes. <laughs> um, it's uh, the circular motion again. You have to realize that it's moving in a circle. And whenever something is moving in a circle of radius r, then there has to be centripetal acceleration of v squared over r. So <laughs> that, that's really the trickiest thing about rotation or circular motion, that you have acceleration in places that you weren't expecting. So really what you need here is a free body diagram. So you draw a free body diagram um, at point B, then at point B, there's going to be gravity, mg. So I, I guess it's going to be accelerating as it's moving downward. Um, all right, there's nothing we can do about that. Now, one fortunate thing is this is the tangential force. This is tangential. And at least in this moment in time, the tangential quantities and the, and the radial quantities, uh, they are independent of each other. Uh, just like the vertical and horizontal components are in independent in the projectile motion. So that means I can kind of ignore what's going on tangentially and just look at the radial quantity. So radially, oh, so that's the place where there can be force of the track. The track can be, uh, the track can be pushing the block to the right. So let me draw that. So this, uh, I'm gonna call this a normal force. This normal force from the track is what's going to put, be pushing the block to the right. All right. Um, Oh, so that's a standard, oh, we are a standard strategy. Because uh, I guess when you started talking about force, then there's, you really have to fall back on standard strategy. So, all right, so that's the first step of drawing free body diagram. The second step is to identify direction of acceleration. Here, I think I'm gonna skip it because the actual acceleration is a little bit down to the right. But um, I, the truth is this. I don't actually care about tangential quantities. That doesn't do, um, not what I'm looking for. So um, what you really just need is the uh, quantities relating to this uh, uh, force of the track, the radial force. And this radial force is going to be related through the centripetal force because, well, um, that's what radial force is. <laughs> Centripetal force, mv squared over r, it, it, that is going to be the normal force in this case because there's no other force acting in this situation. So let me write that down. Uh, part B, we are back to using standard strategy. And by analyzing this situation with the free body diagram, this is how far we got. We got as far as saying normal force, is equal to mb squared over r. 
Oh, and I think I'm done because I'm looking for normal force. All I have to do is write out V in terms of what I found earlier. So um, um, it was under square root. So when you square it, you get this m over r times 6gr. So that means um, r's cancel. Um, and I guess I didn't really have any um, <laughs> vested interest in whether r's cancel or not. Uh, and simplifying it a little bit, this is what it looks like, 6mg. Oh, looks good. That's uh, the normal force on the block. So um, let me just quickly describe how you would tackle C. So the hint says it's the same process as A and B. The one part that, and I think even application of conservation of energy is not too hard just to you know, change some of the heights and you'll define. The part that's uh, challenging with the, the track of the tr force of the track at the top or bottom of the uh, loop the loop is to work out the relative direction between the forces. So at the very top, this is what you should remember that the when you draw the forces on this thing, you have downward the force of mg. That's the gravity always pulling it down. And when you look at the surface carefully, it's you know above the object, so it can only push down. So the normal force from the track will also be downward. Um, so when you set up your, so that's how your free body diagram appears. So when you write down your uh, centripetal force, you have to be careful to include this gravity in the correct way because the centripetal force, it's a net force. So um, what this really represents is the sum of all the forces in the radial direction. So that free body diagram works for a uh, top and at the bottom, what you have to remember is you have gravity pulling it down that most people get. <laughs> There's normal force pulling it up that most people get, if that's uh, where it ended. But in this scenario, the normal force has to be greater than mg so that there's enough imbalancing forces and there's going to be upward acceleration and that upward acceleration will be centripetal force v squared over r or cent centripetal acceleration um, so yeah th this is the type of question sometimes referred to as a mixed strategy question because you uh, you need to know how to use more than one strategy in part A, you, I used the conservation of energy to figure out the velocity. But once I had the velocity, then uh, the analysis shown in part B was the standard the strategy analysis. So you need to not do that. 